Hello everybody, thank you for joining us tonight and welcome to this webinar, There's More to Life Than Children, in which we are absolutely delighted to be joined by the co-founders of Fertility Fest, Jessica Hepburn and Gabby Fultier. Welcome to you both. Hello. <laughs> now you may have seen Jessica before, she's a long-time long advocate of fertility education and a supporter of More to Life. She's also the author of two very successful books, The Pursuit of Motherhood and 21 Miles, and is well known for her adventurous spirit. Uh -huh. Now, Gabby is a theatre producer who has also experienced fertility issues. Together as friends, they've worked hard to build up Fertility Fest from small beginnings to the amazing festival that we can expect this year that we're going to hear all about tonight. Now we will begin this webinar with their presentation and then move on to a short Q&A session. Any questions that you may have can be typed in as we go. We'll visit them after the presentation is finished. Now if you're wondering how to do that, what you do is you just move your cursor down to the bottom of your screen and a toolbar should appear. Click on Q&A and type away. Please select the anonymous function to prevent any personal data being disclosed, as this session will be recorded and people will play it back later. Now, just before we begin tonight, I do have a trigger warning for you. Jessica and Gabby both have very different fertility stories with very different endings. Now, they will talk very briefly about this tonight. And if you feel that you're not in a space to hear that tonight, then please feel free to disappear for the first five minutes because it's only going to be talked about very briefly. And then come back. Go and make yourself a cup of tea for five minutes. Come back and join us. We reckon it'll be seven minutes maximum. So please come back if you feel that you don't want to hear about the fertility journey. Okay, I think you've probably had enough of me, so I'm going to leave you now in the capable hands of Jessica and Gabby. Enjoy. Thank you, Heather. You always introduce um, these More to Life webinars so beautifully. Hi, everyone. I'm Jessica, just so you know who we are, and that's Gabby. Hello, hello. Um, and this is the very first time that we've done um, a live webinar together, so bear with us. We are not Although, technical, got to say. We're getting better at being technical, aren't we? Yeah, yes, slowly. And Heather, but also Heather's just been brilliant with us. Um, and uh, I did uh, some of, if, you, if you've been watching the More to Life webinars for a while, you might have seen, I did one, God, I'm losing track of whether it was earlier this year or the end of last year, but about my book, 21 Miles. Um, and uh, I have to say tonight, I, I plan that meticulously and tonight um, we're going to do a little bit of um, an improvisational double act so I hope that's okay for you all and specifically talking about Fertility Fest. Um, Fertility Fest is um, an arts festival that Gabby and I uh, set up in uh, 2016 um, uh, and it's an arts festival with a social mission and we um, uh, bring artists and uh, fertility experts together and that's clinicians, scientists, academics, charity leaders, um, patient advocates with patients and the wider public to, to discuss all aspects of fertility and infertility and the science of making babies and modern families. Um, and uh, do you want to show our first screen, our first image, our... Um, uh, oh, Gabs, here we go. <clears throat> Gabby's doing the technical. So there we are, Fertility Fest 2019. It's grown from a tiny organization, a tiny um, initiative to its ginormous. Um, uh, uh, this uh, year, uh, we kick off this weekend in Manchester um, at the Fertility Show, um, where we're taking a satellite of the festival. Um, and then we, um, the big flagship festival, which we'll be mainly talking about this evening, is at the Barbican in April and May. It runs from the 23rd of April to the 12th of May. And then in the summer, we're taking um, uh, Fertility Fest to Eshra, which is the biggest 
fertility industry conference in the world, attended by 13,000 professionals. Um, and we are an arts organization with a social mission, and that is to, as, as Heather mentioned in her introduction, we're passionate about improving fertility education. We're also passionate about um, trying to prove understanding of what it means to struggle or go on a complex journey to conceive in order to improve patient support and solidarity, whatever um, your fertility story is, however it ends. And as Heather says, um, Gabby and I have had very different endings to our story, which we'll talk about in a minute. And finally, just to raise all levels of public discourse um, about um, uh, reproductive science. So before we start, just to say, uh, we do have two very different fertility stories. And mine is that I went, for those of you, some of you might know that I went through 11 rounds of IVF unsuccessfully. And Gabby? Uh, and I went through four rounds of IVF and I have twins. So. And we always say that we are the two faces of uh, IVF because IVF does work, but it doesn't work every time for everyone. And um, we want the world to understand that better. And we're not going to talk any more about our fertility stories. We want to talk to you about um, uh, a, a fertility fest and all the amazing things that we've got happening. And particularly, we're going to be focusing on the, the There's More to Life Than Children Day, which we're doing in collaboration with Fertility Network UK. But I just wanted to say this one thing, if I may, which is as, as someone who, you know, will never get over the fact that I wasn't able to have the, a biological baby with the man that I love. Um, but I feel really, really passionate about bringing um, people, women, men, people together, whatever their stories, to try and you know, um, bring us closer together rather than separate us, which is why I am so happy to continue to work with Gabby but I know that like Gabby feels it's really difficult to be here today and I, I, I think that you have a sort of element of something that we do discuss in other parts of the festival like survivor's guilt Gabby would you say um, yeah, and a sensitivity because I, cause I, I know you know in, at points during my trying to conceive I you know I very much felt that sense when someone told me that they that they were successful just the pain of that is very very hard so yes, yeah I'm completely sensitive to it and I hope thank you for having me here and yeah but I just sort of feel like I want people you know I know that I have certain things that I sort of want to communicate to the world around this this topic and one of those things big things is like we all have sad stuff and this is my sad thing that I wasn't able to have the family with the man that I love but doesn't mean that you don't have sad stuff still and you don't get to climb mountains and swim channels not like that I do now not that I'm you know thinking that you might like to but you know I, I think it is really important that we recognize whatever our endings are it's it isn't always like you know a ha you know, life is complex and it isn't uniformly happy. So anyway, that's all we're saying. Now we're moving on. So we've got a plan for this webinar with you guys, um, which is this, which is that we um, thought we wanted to talk about 15 things quickly, not too long, because we don't want to be boring in the festival. We've done the first one of those, which is Fertility Fest. Um, and we've chosen um, 15 things that we're going to talk to you about, um, focusing on this amazing day. Um, there's more to life than um, Children Day, which is on the 27th of April, which we really hope um, that everyone listening will come to. Um, and in fact, even if you can't get to London on that day, there is an opportunity um, to join us online towards the end of the day, which we'll talk about. Um, so, and also on that day, um, so, so the way that this is gonna play is that we're gonna each say one thing about that day and a little bit at the end about the broader festival um, that we hope will interest you and entice you to come. Um, and uh, I've started with Fertility Fest, go look online at the broader programme, um, but the, Gabby's gonna go to number two 
um, which is what, Gabby? Well, at the, um, so what's exciting about this year's festival is that at the heart of the festival is a show. Uh, this happened in the first um, Fertility Fest. We had a show at the centre of it. And so it's brilliant to bring that back this year. And it's uh, Avalanche, which is um, a, a completely beautiful book written by Julia Lee, who's an Australian novelist, um, film director, screenwriter. And she wrote a personal uh, memoir about her experience of going through IVF unsuccessfully. And um, like we're a little bit in love with uh, Maxine Peak, who is uh, a, our star in it. Um, it's a one woman piece and she's just amazing. You might know her from Shameless, from Silk, The Village, Black Mirror. She's done loads of stage stuff. She's like, oh, it's gonna be amazing. In fact, Jessica was in the room with her today. I know, I was very, very lucky. What well, one thing we didn't say, Gabby has moved to Cornwall, um, which is um, a lovely, See by the sea. Pardon? What? What to do with the price of fish? <laughs> well, it's not why well, you can be in rehearsals in London today, but I was in rehearsals with Maxine this morning, and she is going to be phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. So that's running. That that opens on the twenty seventh of April, and it runs through until the twelfth of May. So all across the festival. Brilliant. So that's number two. Number three. Yeah. Okay. So number three, so um, that opens on the evening, the 27th, but we have this amazing day with three sessions during the day, um, looking at the work of artists who have made work around um, uh, childlessness and um, child freeness as well, to, um, to some extent, and all the issues around that. And the first session in the morning involves two artists, and I'm going to talk about this first wonderful woman who is here, um, who's called Chiara Berardelli. Um, and I, I'm just gonna, there's so many things that we could say about all these artists, but what I wanted to say to you all about Chiara is, um, A, I'm really excited to have programmed her because she is a singer-songwriter, um, and uh, we've had many theatre makers and writers, including myself in the festival, but not so many musicians and singer-songwriters, so I was delighted to find her. And um, she is going to be performing songs from her album, Sea Monster, which is about her coming to terms with her own childlessness. And the one fact that I'm really excited, I haven't, I've, I've only seen her perform online, haven't seen her perform live, and I'm really looking forward to it. But my one really interesting fact about Chiara that I am excited about is that she is Scottish Italian. And I love Scotland. I think like I was born in London, but actually I think really I'm Scottish um, and uh, I do quite a lot of work up there. But I also equally love Italy because as far as I'm concerned, Italy's probably got one of the best, uh, best cuisine in the world. And if anyone who knows me you're, or read any of my books, you'll know how much I love food. So that is my exciting fact about Chiara Cum because she's Scottish Italian, two of the best countries in the world. Over to you with the other woman in the session, Gabby. So the other woman, sorry, I have to go back to me. What's it, Chops? Here we are. It is, look at this image, it's so brilliant. <laughs> uh, Victoria Fern, she's created a show called How to Be Amazingly Happy, um, which uh, is about sort of when life doesn't turn out how you expected it to, hoped it to, thought it might, and what to do in that space uh, where you don't, know quite what to do anymore because you you thought it was going a different way what i love about her show we've um we've seen the video of it she went to edinburgh it did brilliantly well it, it's funny it's got clowning in it and singing and cabaret and you know it's all these things that maybe you wouldn't put with the with the sort of subject matter but um yeah she's brilliant and funny and uh, i think you'll really enjoy it so in that session, Women Speak, on, which is in the morning of the 27th, you'll see Chiara and Victoria, they'll each perform for 20 minutes, an extract from their work. Um, and then there is a discussion on stage with two fertility experts um, and, uh, and the audience. So that's our Women Speak session on the 27th of April. Moving on. Yes. Sorry. Here we are. Here he is. 
So this is the legend that is Rod Silvers. And I'm really disappointed um, webinar listeners because um, I had the most hysterical answer machine message from Rod yesterday telling me what he's gonna be doing um, as part of his performance. And I wanted to play it to you just because actually if you could listen to Rod on the phone, um, you would be booking your ticket right now. Um, Rod um, has been making work around fertility and infertility and IVF, unsuccessful IVF, um, for quite a while, which is really, really rare um, for a man because I think, you know, we all, um, you know, one of the sort of sad things about infertility and childlessness is it, A, it's not talked about enough, but it's particularly not talked enough, uh, enough about um, by men. Um, and Rod uh, first made um, a piece, a short film, which was called England Expects, which uh, used football as a metaphor for going through unsuccessful IVF. Um, and he, he made that several years ago, and then he followed that up with a play that he made that I saw um, last year, which is called Terry and Jude, um, with or a, a pun, I think, on the TV series Terry and June, but about two sing, uh, two childless men, single childless men. Um, Rod is hilarious. Um, in his answer machine um, message, he's gonna, he says to me, "I'm going to talk about my little journey for the first time." So he'll be showing a bit. He'll be showing, I hope, some extracts from his work, but also just talking in only the way that Rod can. Please come. It will be hilarious and heartbreaking I'm sure as well. I think that's the thing isn't it people just it's amazing that people take their personal stories and create this work and then share it and there's just something that's what art does that's so brilliant is that just everyone in the room feels yeah together. Um, next yeah. up. Next up well very exciting this one. <laughs> so here we go. <gasps> Benjamin Zephaniah. Um, who is just like a one of the coolest men ever lived and um, one of the most brilliant writers ever, but also is a, is a man, I think one of the first men, male artists to speak about his infertility. And um, I, Jessica's wanted <laughs> Benjamin <laughs> as part of the festival. Not sure about her real motives for this, but anyway, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I love Benjamin Zephaniah. I'm sorry, this is just the, the total highlight for me, um, along with Maxine. But it, well, I mean, we've got so many brilliant artists, but I do, I have to admit that I was, I'm so excited about having Benjamin. I'm going to be interviewing him on stage. He is a legend. He is one of the first artists and a male artist to talk about um, living with infertility. Um, and, uh, you know, as a black man as well, it has to be said, it's, in, it, you know, extraordinary. Um, and I, it's gonna be an honor, an absolute honor. And it is a total one of the highlights of my life. Thank you. <laughs> From day one, you've wanted him, so it's brilliant. I have, I have. So yeah, this is a real pinnacle, right. So that's the Men Speak session. And then the final session of the day before the show in the evening is Fertility Fight Club. So um, Fertility Fight Club is, uh, um, and this is, the, this is the event that if you can't make it to London, you can watch um, from the comfort of your sofa because we'll be live streaming it. Um, and it's a format that we introduced at the festival last year where we invite a range of speakers um, to speak for 10 minutes um, strict timekeeping, 10 minutes about a subject that makes them angry or that they feel passionate about. And we have three brilliant speakers confirmed for this event. Um, and you're, so I'm go, uh, you're, uh, you're going to talk, you talk about Yvonne first, Gabby. So, so Yvonne John, who is, um, again, she's brilliant. She's an author of um, Dreaming of a Life Unlived. She's sort of the leading voice on, childless, uh, on, on childlessness experiences for women of colour. Um, she's been involved in all sorts of things. She came to Fertility Fest. She's, she was on our panel last year. Anyone that's heard her speak, she's so eloquent. 
She's so brilliant. And um, I don't, do you know what her fight is yet, Jessica? Are we, are we revealing, are we not yet? Well, I am going to reveal what the, our next guest's fight is, that everyone's still, I always say that they're still preparing their fighting talk. So I don't know what her title is, but I'm sure it will be something about, particularly about the experience of women of color, yeah. Um, so the next up, we have Bibby Lynch, who is the journalist and broadcaster. I'm putting my um, glasses on for this, people, because I just want to, I do know what her talk is. And her title is, I'm exhausted, which is weird, because I'm not a mother. Um, and um, she is going to challenge the prevailing um, opinion sometimes, not amongst my colleague here, um, uh, who, which is that, women, that women who are mothers, working mothers, are the only people who really know what tiredness is. Well, I need to tell you that I am um, training to climb Everest and we're running an international festival and I'm writing a new book. Um, so I'm pretty tired and I don't have children. So um, Vivi's gonna be challenging that and I understand what she means. Over to you. Oh, and then we have our third fight clubber who's Sheridan Boise, who um, he did a fight club last year. So actually, if you go on our website and look in our archive, you can have a look at his last year. His was, uh, his was entitled, Why Don't You Just Adopt? Uh, that brilliant phrase that people just lump at you. Um, so he is... Uh, Can I just say on that, Gabby, that I love Anya Sizer, who um, uh, works for Fertility Network UK with Heather, um, who has two IVF children and has adopted one, um, uh, 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 one son. And she says the most brilliant thing that I always quote, there is no just in adoption. Um, and his, his speech was brilliant last year, but yes, carry on. Yeah. Anyway, uh, no, he's great. Again, eloquent, funny, thoughtful. They're just, re they're really good events to like dip in and, uh, and experience online or live. Because we should, should we say that you can sort of buy a thing, you can buy a ticket to the whole day, but you can also come to just parts of it as well. So it's up uh to you. Absolutely. So those three, if you want to come to all three sessions, it's £20 bargain. But if you just want to come to one of the, those three sessions, it's £10. Um, and then um, in the evening, it's the first performance of Avalanche and you can book a ticket for that. So next slide. So just the final thing on this day. Um, uh, and I just wanted to introduce three lovely ladies, one on the left hand side who everyone knows, Heather. So we're really excited to um, be doing this day in collaboration with There's More to Life Than Children. Heather is going to be one of our experts on the Women Speak, um, the first session of the day. And she is also going to be chairing our Fertility Bike Club. Um, and in the middle, we have, um, I'm sure, someone who's familiar to many, Jodie Day. Um, and uh, Jodie is going to be chairing the um, Women Speak and the Men Speak discussions. Um, I wanted to say something about Jodie, which is we've asked all our artists and experts involved in Fertility Fest to um, complete the sentence, I am involved in Fertility Fest because, and I absolutely love what Jodie wrote. She said, I'm involved in Fertility Fest because the struggles and triumphs of the childless are part of the story of the 21st century life. I love that Fertility Fest makes sure that we too have a chair at the table of life. And I, I love that. Thank you, Jodie. Um, and then finally, on the right-hand side, we have Natalie Silverman, who um, is uh, uh, from the Fertility Podcast. Um, she is our podcaster in residence at the festival. We have a writer in residence, a visual artist in residence, and a podcaster in res residence, and that's Natalie. Um, and uh, Natalie will be interviewing people um, during the day to create a podcast around this day um, and also she she will be she's responsible for the live streaming of the fertility bike club um, and just if you if you like mine and Gabby's d double act at all and you just fancy um, listening and not seeing us we have recently just done our first double act um, on we did a takeover of Natalie's podcast um, where uh, it was 
it was quite fun. Bob Bob Mortimer featured rather a lot in our. Um, it, so you'll have to go and listen to understand that. So okay. well, next slide. Sorry, I just um, sorry, I just went into a technical meltdown. Am I there? Am I still with you? Yeah, I can see you in your stripy top. Oh, gee whiz, hang on. It's all gone pear-shaped. Bear with me, everyone. Can you keep talking, Jess? Well, can I, well, we wanted to move on to talk to you um, about, um, so that's the Water Life Day on the 27th of April, which we hope many of you will come to. Um, and uh, how are we doing? Okay. Okay. I'm really sorry. I've just lost. Hi. Hi. I'm so sorry. I've just lost the PowerPoint with all the lovely pictures on it. So I'm going to tell you um, about uh, the final thing that we wanted to talk to you about, which is um, if you're uh, if you can't come to the 27th, or if you can come to the 27th and you want more, then um, another thing that we would really recommend in at the Fertility Best in the Barbican is the Big Fat um, Festival Day, which we um, is on the Friday the 3rd of May, and we call it our um, our signature day within the festival where we put IVF under the creative spotlight. Um, uh, we, uh, so it's on Friday the 3rd of May, it's an all day event. It's really, the, the format of it is how we started really, you know, um, and very much, the, the There's More to Life Day looks at all sorts of reasons why people might end up in the position of being childless but um the uh, the big fat festival day really does look at ivf and and uh, both and particularly unsuccessful ivf as part of that and we have two events that day there's lots of things to choose from and and go and see but we wanted to highlight um and and this do we have the, the images for these now gabby or have we lost them so sorry, I I have lost them. So I had one job. So it, no, it's totally fine because we did only have two more images for you all, so you're not missing out too much. So we have two events. So do you want to talk about the first one, Bay and Camilla? Yeah, sure. So the title of this event is called When Art Doesn't Work, A R T. Um, Faye Glenn and Camilla Lyon, they're both visual artists they're really different in their styles. So Camilla Lyon's a painter, and her her artwork is very beautiful and um, you can see it on her website it's really beautiful and and detailed and Faye Glenn um, has these really striking sculptures that are that sort of encapsulate the her, the feeling of her, of her body and what what the pain that she went through and they're just they're both just completely brilliant and so different and um, yeah and they will be um, uh, in discussion with, amongst other people, Professor Jackie Boivin. Um, Jackie is uh, one of the world's leading reproductive psychologists, um, you know, and uh, is, is, has been a brilliant supporter of the festival and uh, is um, childless herself uh, and a brilliant person to go and hear um, in conversation with them. And the other event in the afternoon we're really excited about um, because this year for the first year, as well as having, you know, amazing names like Maxine Peake and Benjamin Zephaniah, we have some international guests coming to the festival, which we're really excited about, including Irina Voda. Irina is an American filmmaker. Um, her new film, which is called, uh, her documentary film, which is called Anything You Lose, um, is coming out this year. And we are going to be screening the world premiere of it on our Big Fat Festival Day in the afternoon. Um, and then she will, the director will be with us and in discussion with fertility experts about it. I have had the privilege of seeing the film and I would, I would just say that like, you know, I, I get sent a lot of work um, uh, now, you know, around uh, people making, artists making work around this subject. And I just knew within the first few frames that we absolutely have 
to show it. It's a it's a beautiful film. It's um, it's a very uh, original film um, in in terms of its documentary style. But also, I think the thing that I um, you just do not know where it's going to end or how it's going to end and it doesn't end with a conventional happy ending um, and we need to hear more of those stories and that is what um, uh, Fertility Fest is about so on her IVF journey she goes from you know India to the States you know round the world and it doesn't end with the ending that everyone wants to propagate and that is why it is so important. So, I just wondered if we should also just mention one more thing, which is our Fertility Fest Heroes, which will be around during the event to sort of help support people throughout the day. Because we know that it's emotional, we know it's hard. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and yeah, we've got people like Leslie Pine um, and, uh, and Stephanie Phillips from World Childless um, uh, Day uh, so a week. Um, so some brilliant people, Kelly De Silva. Um, so some brilliant, brilliant people who will be supporting on that day. So we're nearly coming to an end, folks, but we've finished. We've be, we, we, I don't know if you've been counting out there, but we've been through 13 questions. So we've got two more. And we don't. If you listen to our podcast takeover of the Fertility Podcast, you will see us doing this version, uh, doing another version of this, which is that we've got a question for each other, um, which we don't know what it is. Um, so, and we'll see how we answer. So I've got my question for you, Gabby. Have you got your question for me? Yeah, I've got three. So you do yours first, and then I will choose which one I'm going to give you. Okay, Gabby. <laughs> Um, we're going to Fertility Show in Manchester this weekend. Your husband is from Manchester. Yeah. I wanted to ask you, and, all, and obviously I've been with Maxine all morning, another Manchester um, uh, person. Um, and I, but I wanted to specifically ask you, what makes Northern Boys so special? <laughs> I think uh, what makes Northern Boys so special? It's all the gruff, you know. <laughs> it's the voice, isn't it? It's the voice. The kind of like no, no um, airs and graces voice, I would say. And did his fertility journey change him? Oh God, yeah. Yeah, totally. Not the same man? No, 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 no. No, still dealing with it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, all right, all right. So, okay. <laughs> I'm choosing this one. Right, if you, because we know you love eating, right? If you were a cake or a dessert, which would you be? Representing oh. yourself in cake form or dessert form, what is Jessica Hepburn? God. <laughs> Do you know, like, the, the problem is these questions are not good because I absolutely love this sort of question. But because my food world is so detailed and complex in my head, it is very... Pardon. I know! This is why it's not a good question for me. Um, it's a really, really bad question for me because it really depends on the mood. Today. So, today. Uh, today. Today. Today, well, I don't know. I feel like I want to say sticky toffee pudding. But I don't want anyone, just that's what, what I could quite eat now. But I don't want anyone to think that that is me definitively in a cake because it just really isn't. Like, I, in fact, I very rarely have a, a sticky toffee pudding. But today, that is who I am. That is quote of the day. Yeah. I don't want anyone definitively talk about me a sticky toffee pudding yeah thank guys much. thank you so much for listening so we just want you to know that we would love you to join us um at fertility fest this year somewhere in the world we're in manchester this weekend at the fertility show we're in london at the barbican from the 23rd of april to the 12th of may um we are in if you're going to vienna we're in eshra vienna um in june and actually avalanche is transferring to sydney in august 
Um, so we will also be um, uh, in at the Sydney Theatre Company in August. Um, you can also join us online. We have various events that are going to be live streamed if you can't get to any of those places. And the place to find out more information about everything is www fertilityfest.com. We will be there. Um, and if you do come, please come and say hello and join what we call the Fertility Fest family. Thank you. Thank you so much for that, both of you. I came back a little bit early because I didn't know if Gabby was going to need some help with the technical side of things, but you managed anyway, so that's fine. Um, Thank you for filling in about what we can expect this year at Fertility Fest. I just want to say that a couple of weeks ago on International Women's Day, I actually saw Kiara perform live. She, she did her Sea Monster set. Oh, did she? Yeah, and I saw... How was it? How was it? Oh, absolutely amazing. It was really, really moving. In between songs, what she did was um, she would chat in a very sort of understated way about her fertility journey and about how she came to terms with not being a mother and how she expected to be a mother. And it, it, she, um, she had a very peaceful way of putting it across. And um, it was just a really, really enjoyable e evening. It was, it was lovely really good so i'm looking forward to seeing chiara perform brilliant. again at fertility brilliant. brilliant um and the other thing that i was going to say is you talked about the fertility fest heroes well actually as you know jessica because obviously i asked your permission about this i am hoping to schedule a facebook live or an insta live i'm not quite sure how we're going to do it yet um, i'm relying on the younger people in the charity to help me do this if i'm completely <laughs> honest but um on that day there's more to life than children on that day i will be doing um some insta lives or facebook lives for the more to life community mm, and yeah. the fertility fest heroes have agreed to let me interview them so oh, as we walk yeah. around so the whole idea of that is if you can't get to london is that the more to life community will still get to see and, and hopefully feel some of the atmosphere on the day and um, speak to some of the Fertility Fest heroes if I can catch them. Um, I'm going to have to try and time it so that they're not all in watching Rod Silvers do his bit because <laughs> I, what I want to see that as well. So oh. I'm going to have to time this really carefully so I don't miss the bits that I want to see. Breaks between, yeah, but yeah. 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 I think everyone's going to be watching that, yeah. But we are gonna we are gonna post details of when those live posts will be happening um, on our social media, etc. So watch that. But anyway, let's have a look at some of the questions that we've been asked. I can see there are a few there. Okay. Okay. It wasn't actually questions about the event. It was just somebody saying, "Can um, Gabby turn up her microphone, please?" Now you were you were a little bit quieter. I, I do hope I do hope that everybody managed to hear you. Sorry about that. Um, if you didn't, um, I will try on the recording. I don't know if I'll be able to turn the sound up on the recording. I think that's something else I'll be asking the younger people um, at Fertility Network to help me with as well when we try to edit the recording. But if if there were some sound issues tonight, I'll try and get that fixed for the recording if I can. Anyway, I've got a few questions for you. You talked about having all these wonderful people there. Um, how on earth did you make the decision? Because obviously Fertility Fest has really become one of those events that lots of people want to perform in. So I'm, I'm gonna ask you that really difficult question. How do you decide, first of all, how you're going to put all the slots together with the people and secondly how you're going to fit everybody in that wants to contribute <laughs> oh it's really hard heather it's really hard because as it's grown more and more people do want to get involved um and we have a like a combination of sort of wanting to bring in new voices every year but also very much like you know some of our artists have returned and we like that as well because you know as we've grown as an organization more and more people are coming and they haven't necessarily seen 
people um, that were in it, you know, last year or the year before. Um, so it is, it, it is really hard. And I think what we do, I mean, Gabby and I talk a lot, you know, we get, um, you go through a process of you sort of, you sort of go, well, we know that there's a format, which is we always have two, art, you know, most of our sessions are two artists followed by um, discussion and debate with um, fertility experts. So, uh, and we sort of just, in some respects, you're, you sort of think like who would work together, what would make a, you know, what, what artists would complement each other, both where the themes are either similar or contrasting or the energy of the artist or the art form is similar or different. You know, you just, it, it's sort of like an instinctive thing. And then, you know, I, I might start because I'm, I do a lot of the meetings and seeing of the work and then I sort of start to um, kind of plot it and then Gabby and I discuss it and, you know, do, and, and does it feel right? And then, and then, you know, after a while we'll go, yeah, that, that feels right now and we'll confirm it. So it's, it's, it's sort of a, a, an ongoing and quite a long process and a difficult process because we can't always include everybody. Um, and, but I hope, you know, I do, you know, I do feel that it, we've got a real diversity of voices and some really great quality artists and all the events of, you know, well, I'm looking forward to them. So what would you, would you add anything to that, Gabby? I think just also that we've been really thoughtful about themes. Like there's lots of moments of us sat on the floor with big pieces of paper thinking sort of um, kind of the overview of everything. Because obviously with this subject, there's so many different stories. There's so many different yeah. elements to it. You know, there's so much complexity and it's about trying to involve everybody and everyone without it feeling, uh, while still feeling that, that there's a space that you know, okay, that's really for me and I'll really understand that and that's really my group of people as well. So, um, so yeah. That's really true because the first festival three years ago was this, was a bit like our Big Fat Festival Day, which is like one day where we had lots of different topics and we still have that. That's our signature event. But actually what's really interesting is that last year was the first time we did There's More to Life. We did the, the, an evening, the There's More to Life evening. And that worked really, really well. It, you know, it really felt like this is an event for people with a particular experience who, you know, and, and we're not looking at any other experience but that one. And so that, so that we thought, great, that really works. So now we have a whole day rather than just an evening. But equally, what we've learned from um, There's More to Life being so successful last year is that there, this year we've got much more themed events. So you can sort of go, what is my fertility story and where do I fit, whether that's the queer family. And actually within all our themed events, so the queer family, the male experience, we've got young, gifted and infertile, there's generally always an artist within that whose particular story is childlessness, but there will, might be other um, uh, you know, stories within that as well around that particular theme. Thank you. Okay, now uh, this question is, Jessica mentioned the Women Speak session as being in the morning. Can you confirm that it starts at 1.30 as shown oh, on the God. side? You're, you're, I'm so sorry, Heather. Well, I've, I've written them down. Yeah. 1.30 to 2.45. Yes, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure you're right. Yeah. You're, it's it's actually the following week, the Saturday, where I think the the events start at eleven. You, Heather, I'm glad you're on it. No, it's okay. I wrote it all down in my post notes. I have post it notes all around my desk whenever I do any of these. Yes. Okay. Do you not listen to Jessica about times? Go onto our website and check our times. <laughs> right. Jessica, this is a question for you. Um, yeah. You mentioned that you're writing another book. Can yeah. you tell us more about that, please, and when it will be available? And oh. then any other news that you may want to share about books? Yeah, well? Oh, well, actually, we talk about this in our podcast because it's actually top secret, Heather. I, I'm not actually... Gabby doesn't know. Very, very few people okay. know about the new book, but I am working on a new book. Um, and it, uh, it takes me a little while to... Um, to write a book. I mean, I've now written two books. 
um, very excitingly, we were talking about before we came on live that my um, second book, uh, 21 Miles, is now is coming out in paperback this year, which is really exciting. So um, that, uh, but, but the, the third book, um, well, I will say this. I hope that it will be out in 2022. So it's a little way off and it ties in with a very significant anniversary in that year. But that is all I'm saying at this point. Google. Okay. <laughs> she didn't give anything away, did she? <laughs> yeah, I thought I'd be able to get it out of her, but no. Yeah. To get you so I'm just living in my little book world. I don't want a, a wider world to know about it. But anyway, all will be revealed over to you. Okay, there's one more thing that I want to say about Fertility Fest as well is um, I was actually talking to Stephanie um, Phillips about it one day and she said to me, you will love it, Heather. She said, just right up your street. She said to me, everybody is so supportive and they're with you and you just feel that it's an absolutely wonderful day. I think I might have been telling her that I was a little bit nervous about coming on to the stage. And she said, oh, no, you'll be fine because everybody will be wonderful around you. So um, I'm really looking forward to that. So thank you for inviting me to do that. Oh, wow. Pleasure. I really appreciate that. Well, I, I think we're pretty much, that's all there's sort of time for tonight, but I do have a few sort of business things to do, which is just basically to say that the recording of this webinar should be available in the next week or so. Our next webinar will be on Wednesday, the 3rd of April, um, and that will be Brandy Lytle and Nikki Fletcher, who are going to talk us through the ups and downs um, and offer us some support techniques we can adopt to anchor an action to a positive emotion. Um, so we hope you, that you will register and join us for that. Now, many people ask me for reminders for these webinars and because of current data protection laws, we can only send you reminders if you specifically ask us for them. So if you would like to receive a reminder, please email me at heather at fertilitynetworkuk.org um, and just ask for an MTL webinar reminder. Um, I will not share your data with any other organization and I will only use it for the purpose stated. It will be kept for the duration of the 2019 webinar series and can be removed at any time if requested by you. You only need to send me one request for the whole series. Um, I would like to say one more huge thanks to Jessica and Gabby for joining us this evening. And of course, thank you to everybody else for joining us too. Hope to see you again. Bye, Bye. everybody. See you at the Fest. Thank you. Good night. Bye.